but you can do labs to calculate the molar heat of uh, well, a molar heat of solution. That's just like taking an ionic compound like salt and uh, dissolving it in water and finding out what the heat change is, whether it's exothermic or endothermic. Heat is absorbed or heat is released. Uh, molar heat of solution could be called molar heat of ionization because it's an ionic compound. Uh, molar heat of dissociation. When you combine an acid or a base in a calorimeter, you can calculate the molar heat of neutralization when they're put together. So. Uh, all of those, however, are very similar in that you can use the formula NH equals MC delta T to be able to calculate that molar heat number, big H. So chemical change. Well, first of all, again, phase change when molecules are separated and you break their intermolecular bonds. But if you go to intra here, now all of a sudden you might be able to take these elements and make new types of compounds and that's a chemical change. So chemical changes, well we can represent those in different ways too. And here we have some chemical changes that are written down here as equations. And um, look at this one. Here's some glucose that's undergoing fermentation and forming carbon dioxide gas and ethanol which is drinking alcohol. <laughs> now. This reaction right here says that 68 kilojoules are also produced, and that means this, that this reaction is exothermic. Exothermic because this is the amount of energy net that comes off of this reaction. Now, what do I mean by net? Okay, now, now stay with me here. In order to break the bonds here, energy has to be added to this chemical. And then, Every time bonds form, energy is released. By the way, that's immutable again. You can't just, you have to understand this. It's very vital that when bonds form, energy is always released. When bonds are broken, energy is always required in order to break. So, energy has to go in, energy comes off, the change is 68 kilojoules. 68 kilojoules more released than added. And so, we can represent this number here in the, well, not in the equation, but out of the equation, by actually writing something called delta H notation. So this can be actually written as the delta H for this reaction equals 68 kilojoules, and we put a negative in front of the 68, because that, that says that there is a net amount of heat released in this reaction. Okay, so anytime you see the heat term on the right-hand side of an equation, when you take it out into delta H notation, which stands for the change in enthalpy, the change in heat content, when it's negative, you've got yourself an exothermic reaction when the heat term's on the right side. Now, here's another reaction. Here's water gas, and we're taking it and breaking it down into its elements, hydrogen and oxygen. Now, you're saying, well, chem guy, look, you got a one, one, and one half there. Why don't you just balance it two, two, one? Yeah, I could do that, but then the heat here would change, okay? So just to always be careful of that. If somebody says, well, let's double the balancing here, well, then you better double the heat. Let's half the balancing, so you better half the heat. So in this case right here, this actually represents the molar decomposition, one mole of this decomposing into its elements, as opposed to, if it was reversed, the molar heat of formation of that compound. Now, if we were to write this, which is an endothermic reaction, as a delta H, the delta H for this reaction would be positive 241.8 kilojoules because that was endothermic. That heat term used to be on this side, so it's going to be a positive delta H, that means endothermic again. Now, if we reverse the equation, what do you do to the sign? You reverse it. You just turn something from endothermic to exothermic. Right. And so again, that gives you, in that case, uh, in this one here, a heat of decomposition, the reverse of that is a heat of formation. Okay, now you know what we got to do with these? we got to kind of represent them on graphs.